In this video, we're going to talk about emergency special working. This is a new method of working that allows trains to be moved during a major signalling failure. In contrast to the existing temporary block working rules, emergency special working does not need hand signallers and does not require points to be secured where they're still detected by the signalling system. These changes mean that emergency special working allows trains to be moved more safely and more quickly than temporary block working. Stuart Palmer spent his entire career working on the railway and retired as Managing Director of South West Trains in 2009. He explains why he sees emergency special working as a good thing, both for passengers and the industry. The first proposals were mooted. Uh, I wrote a letter to RSSB on the 2nd of November 2004. So I think that does tell you that this is not something which has been entered into lightly or without proper consideration. There was a lot of work done in terms of assessing the overall levels of risk with proposed changes to the method of working. Uh, and there were extensive trials done which involved real drivers and real signalers. These were not theoretical trials, they were real trials, which actually demonstrated that the concept was robust and uh, indeed provided an overall safety benefit. And I'm very confident that with the processes that the industry now has, not just in the train operating companies, but also in network rail in terms of signalers, that we actually have the tools and the capable people to deliver this safely. A railway which actually keeps traffic moving will actually be a safer railway because at the moment if you think of the risks of uncontrolled evacuation from passenger trains, particularly in peak periods when trains are often crowded, the risks of spads as you have trains standing all over the network and, and trains approaching cautionary and red signals, the risks of serious overcrowding both on trains and on stations and you know we now have a very busy railway. So I think you have to look at this thing holistically. It is about managing total risk. And why I'm very pleased about these proposals is that that is exactly what the industry has done. If we can find ways of getting trains moving more quickly, then that has got to be good for users, both passenger and freight, and good for the staff. Don't forget that many of the staff are in the front line of passenger anger and, uh, and abuse when things like this happen and we have to find a better way of doing it and I believe these proposals are just that. Now let's hear from Tony Rain from Network Rail explaining some of the factors that led to this rules change. The rules themselves were developed uh, seven years ago uh, by uh, drivers, signallers, uh, the Tox and the Fox were involved uh, along with the unions, both the RMT uh, and ASLEF uh, came in uh, and, and took this uh, inception uh, through the journey to where we are today of having the rules in place for December 2018. Some of the other benefits we've seen through emergency special working is uh, the SPAD reduction, where we're not having so many trains now standing at red signals, but also it's the, it's the customer. Uh, they're seeing uh, a significant change in the way we have trains standing, so they're not standing for so long. Three or four hours to get temporary block working into position. Now, potentially 20 to 30 minutes, we can have emergency special working in, so therefore trains are standing a lot less and, and passengers are getting to their destination. The new emergency special working rules are a result of research and risk assessment carried out over more than 10 years. Operational trials have been underway on the Wessex route of network rail since 2013, and more recently on Western and Anglia. During this time, hundreds of trains have operated through emergency special working. Let's hear from some of the staff who've been involved, talking about their experiences. I became involved in the emergency special working trial when I started at Southwest Trains in 2012. The rulebook changes that will start in 2018 will obviously benefit from the years of trials that we've done on Southwest Trains. Traditionally, and, and particularly for me, it was the risk that stranded trains in ports to the railway and our, as a train operating company, as a duty holder. So anything that we can do to enable trains to move sooner through a situation where we have degraded working and, and loss of signalling is always going to be safer. I'd like to just stress the important part that this is a partnership approach with Network Rail. Yes, it's the infrastructure that will fail uh, that causes the signalling to fail, but we're as duty holders, we've got a duty of cooperation and the risk that it is imported onto the train operating company is quite significant. So this emergency special working actually mitigates that risk and therefore I would employ all train operating companies to understand this in detail because it does significantly reduce that risk exposure to the train operating company. 
We trialled emergency special work in uh, several times on the Wessex route. Uh, experiences that each time that we've trialled emergency special work in, it's been easy to implement. Um, we've obviously got some performance benefits versus temporary block working uh, in terms of actually setting up emergency special working uh, and also in terms of actually resourcing. Feedback from signals has been positive. Uh, there have been a few lessons learnt through the trial period which have now been integrated into the rulebook. In the next video, we're going to explain the principles of emergency special working and show you how they compare to temporary block working.